here we have the Entero Macabeo from Mantrela, and this is an old vine, organic, unfiltered. Unfiltered, yeah. yeah. Unfiltered, but surprisingly clear. We yeah. were surprised when we uh, first picked this up, because unfiltered wines, well, what does that mean? Well, once all the wine process is done, and you've got the yeast is, is dead, it's eaten all the sugar and turned it into alcohol and done its job, we tend to filter it off, because we don't want it knocking about in there, mostly for visual appearance. They've left this unfiltered. I can't really explain why, but even though it's unfiltered, it's super clear in the glass. Um, and that filtering can be where a wine becomes vegan or not vegan, because the agent they use to filter it can be yeah, derived can be from animals. Derived from yeah. animals, absolutely. Um, so this is unfiltered, but it is fantastically clear. It hasn't changed it at all, but in not filtering it, they've left the yeast in, and that's where we get the um, richer, creamier flavors from the yeast, which is good get in this wine. Mm. So back to the grape though, Macabeo, uh, Macabeo or Viura as it's known in the Rioja region, goes into lots of white Rioja, but Macabeo, probably uh, one of the most famous white grapes in Spain, certainly to the Spanish, if not us. Most widely planted is a different one, Aaron, but Macabeo is probably the Spain, Sp Spanishes, the Spanishes? The Spanishes. <laughs> the Sp Spain's most uh, popular white grape. Goes into making Cava, their sparkling wine, um, and it's kind of on a similar plane to Chardonnay. Don't let that put you off. Chardonnay's great, but Macabeo is also. So it, it, it's versatile. It can grow all over Spain in the hottest parts, in the coldest parts. Manchuela, south of Spain, southeast. Uh, so we're talking hot here. Um, we're getting closer to the equator. But Manchuela is very high up on a plateau and it has a lots of altitude and altitude uh, cools those grapes down. And what altitude also creates is a technical word alert. Diurnal change. Diurnal change. Break it down. What is a diurnal change? The diurnal change is super important for, for growing, particularly white wines, where you want the acidity to be nice and high and refreshing, but you still want the ripeness to develop fruity flavors. What it means is difference in temperature between night and day. So in the daytime, it's super, super hot, lots of sunshine, lots of ripeness for the grapes, so that they don't become overripe and too sugary at night time, boom, the temperature drops down and it's super cold. Altitude is the only way to achieve this, being up a mountain essentially, and it's really, really important. It's what the Chileans do fantastically, developing these white wines that you're like, wow, this is really refreshing. That's the acidity from the night time, but it's also, there's flavor. There's loads of flavors coming through and that's from the brightness in the day. Yeah, I mean, th there is that kind of creamy butteriness to it. And you said this is from the yeast being left in. So in, in in France, you would see that as, as lees aging, mm -hmm. and in Spain, sobre lias yep. is how you can see it on the bottle. Um, but yeah, it kind of like, it's got like a buttery kind of vibe to it. Yeah, it, it's, it's light in this. There's no doubt about it. Like, lees aging can be done in a heavier way. This is, this is just a touch of it. But it adds a richness to the wine. But the grape naturally, Macabeo, very much like Chardonnay, naturally has weight to it. So we're not just talking about fresh, limey, lemony flavors, but there's tropical fruits and a richness to it, which makes it sort of, I guess, like one level above your average patio white wine. I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you've said there, you know, it, it could could be slightly better than, you know, a patio wine's got a bit more going on. Like, when, when are you reaching for this bottle? Well, I still think it's a summer sipper. I think mm. it's a great one. It is super refreshing. That diurnal change has kept the acidity high and it is really nice and refreshing, but you know, if you were having, I don't know, so, you know, like buffet food or barbecue where there's nibbles and stuff like that. And so there's lots of different flavors coming together. Or if you were sort of having maybe cheese, but you, you, you wanted white wine as well as red as an option, this, this will do the job. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I really like it. And I know that sometimes unfiltered can be, you know, very left field, but, but this, is, this is just a great, a great wine. Yeah, really it's great, it. great quality winemaking. Don't let unfiltered put you off. It's as crystal clear as you like. There's no risks here or anything like that. And there's a richness to it as a result. Absolutely. All right, cheers. cheers.